Hi everyone, today I'm going to go ahead and get my inlet switched out on my N54 335i. Um, currently have the stock ones on, but I'm running upgraded turbos, so with the new inlets, um, pr pretty much more real estate for air to move. Um, let me see. Just, I went ahead and went with the MMP branded um, inlets. There's like a whole bunch of different companies that have them, I believe, was it Bargis, Arby's, um, those are the only ones I could come up off the top of my head right now. But uh, yeah, I just chose the MMP ones. They seem pretty solid and then they came in at a pretty good price also. So at the end of the day, it's all pretty much on um, what piping and metal and all that other crap. So Okay, so this is the kit right here. Um, comes with the new filters over here. Oh. Looks pretty medium like. Um, two of them clamps, two them, some brackets and some fittings of that nature. That's for the sensor to be splice sensor. So, I already got the car in the air or on jack stands. Um, just the old filters, yeah, I know they're dirty. So I didn't change them because I know I'm going to put in the new set. So I'm just going to like toss these or pretty much they're pretty beat, but they can get recharged or something. Somebody could use them for like 10 bucks or something like that. So yeah, these cones will be pretty much coming out this way. And this bad boy over here will be moving over to here. And then this get located to be right here over the alternator. I kind of don't like it being over the alternator because I've noticed when I had my SC300, actually my LS400 also, they have the power steering reservoir over the alternator and what happens is it starts to, there's a diaphragm that starts to leak out of it and then it just leaks onto the alternator and it makes the alternator goes bad. And as you can see, I have a new alternator. <laughs> I don't want to mess that up. It has less than like a thousand miles on it. So this is the pancake restrictive front um, inlet runs all the way over down to the turbos down there and let me see the rear one is right here and it runs all the way back and down in the turbo the second turbo on the back hence why you see why I chose to do the non-stock relocation one because feeding that tube all the way back there is that like, gonna be a pain so yeah I already took off the top collar and all that other good stuff, AC um, filter, and yeah, I think I'm going to take off the valve cover also, not the valve cover, but the engine cover, take that off so I get a little bit more visibility, and I could also check and see if I have any leaks on the um, top of the engine or anything like that. So this is where I'm at currently, I uh, got the, what you call it? coolant relocated so it's in the brackets are in I think I want to like take these off and paint them black or whatever I don't know I might just leave them and power steering is relocated also and I might want to trim this a little bit to make it fit like route it like that instead of all this slack right here um yeah, it frees up the engine bay a little bit. So still have to connect this right here for the return line, not a return line, but the feed line for the coolant um, over here. So yeah, I'm about to fix that and then go ahead and um, mount these canisters. I forgot what they're called. They have something to do with uh, turbos or whatever. It's vacuum, they hold vacuum anyway. So I think I'm gonna move these from here up to somewhere around there and rerun the lines. So this is the wire for the, what's it called? The coolant sensor. So I have it running all the way over and down. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up down there. Um, so all in all, this job is like a, mixed of a lot of different things soldering wiring and um <laughs> moving stuff around 
It's like a big old jigsaw puzzle. So, uh, let me see. I think my turbos are somewhere over here. Yep. Sort of entrance at. So I gotta run a tube from there up to here, and then I'm about to fit the other one way down there. And as you can see, I have the valve cover is leaking a little bit. Uh, oh well. All right, so I've encountered another roadblock. Um, I was just about to, I just pulled the uh, steering rack off, made it loose or whatever, so I could get more room for this kind of down pipes so I get access to the rear inlets but then i see all this oil and filth underneath here and it's like you know what might as well fix the oil pan gasket which seems to be leaking right here so i need to go get another oil pan gasket and then yeah pretty much flush out all the oil and all the good stuff so to do that i have to drop the subframe and it would be a lot more easier for me to do the rear inlets if the subframe is dropped so I'm just gonna go ahead and um just gonna go ahead and do the rear inlet when I get the gasket in drop the subframe and do it all at once because I hate to sit here and struggle with it now when I could go ahead and um get the rear inlet in pretty easily and do the oil pan gasket all in the same shot so yeah I, it's not really hurting much right now so i'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of so i got everything routed correctly right now shorten this up a little bit um coolants in everything over is set up good um zip tied the line down by the ac line and yeah this is the inlet right here the front one so all that's left now is to just reroute the rear one up forward, but as I said, I'm gonna do it another day when I get the valve, not valve cover. Actually, yeah, I should do the valve cover gasket also to do all the gaskets in one shot also. So, yeah, this is the last pipe I need to put in. That's the rear um, inlet. I'm just gonna sit that up for a little bit until it's time to do it do it when I get the gasket in my ER oh man intercooler stealth edition one I gotta clean it up a little bit before I put it back in works pretty good my AT levels have been like extremely low I'm pretty happy with this intercooler um and that's the front inlet right there oh yeah also did the canister deletes it's uh, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, did a lot of research before doing it, and like, it cleans up. It was actually right here. The stuff that was right here. Um, it cleans out the engine bay, and then I was gonna reroute them, but I was like, there's no really place. There's not really a place on here that I'd like it to go aesthetically. I've seen some people put them inside here, inside the. I forgot what it's called. It's for your air filter or whatever, but some people stick them in there or post them against up here in the walls and stuff like that. But I'm like, might as well just delete it. <laughs> so it's deleted now. And the, the way to do it was you just unconnect the clips. Like there's a vacuum sort of pump over here or something like that. So you take the lines that's off the canister and then just join them to the lines that's coming over here. So let's plug them out take the one that was running from the other end of the canister, put them together, and that's it. So you just pretty much bypass the canisters and um, yeah, gives it a little more cleaner look. Before I put the engine cover on, I'm gonna make sure I have the wires tucked in nice and good. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble everything for now and get on ordering those parts. And once the parts come in, then yeah, I get this thing wrapped up.